Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we started talking about was exponents and using exponents when we're uh, writing and evaluating expressions. So, in this situation here, we have this uh, binary fission bacteria. And bacteria, I guess in the right circumstances, what happens is it tends to split. So it gets nice and healthy, like this guy here. It gets nice and healthy, it splits into two parts. Okay, so it's kind of gross in a way, but hey, I guess this is life. So that these guys get nice and big and healthy, and then they split into two parts. So they're acting like exponents in a way. Every time we have another generation, what, what, what's happening is we're doubling the amount of bacteria, which is kind of scary when you think about it, but that's the situation. Now, how does math get involved in this? Well, let's talk about those generations for a second here. So here's that first generation, okay? We have, we have first generation, we have two bacteria, and what you'll notice is that for every generation, our exponent will mirror our exponent. So in our third generation, we'll have 2 to the third power, or we'll have 8 as a number for our bacteria. Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because we can say something like, hey, for our fifth generation here, all I need to do, instead of building this tremendous chart or doubling our values all the time, I can simply say I need 2 to the fifth power because the 5 as my exponent is my generation. So we're finding all kinds of patterns and things when we're uh, dealing with these charts. What's also happening, every time I jump a generation, I'm actually uh, doubling my number of bacteria. So for every generation, for every one generation, the number, number of my bacteria is actually doubling in size. Okay, so there are a couple of nice things going on here. From that, we can answer any question we want. So if I'm looking for the, you know, the uh, 23rd generation, all I have to do is find out, well, what is 2 to the 23rd power? And that'll give me the number of bacteria uh, that exist. Okay? So that's kind of nice. Now, um, how does that look as far as an equation is concerned or an expression is concerned? Well, we can then say if generation we use the, the variable g for generation, we can say that <clears throat> 2 to the g power, g representing the number of generations. So that would then be my expression, so 2 to the g. Once I find out, or once I know what my generation is, then I can then find out the number of bacteria by simply replacing that g with, the, um, with that uh, appropriate exponent. Okay? Kind of neat. And then there's another one here I just wanted to take a look at quickly. I'm looking at a rectangular solid or a rectangular prism. And we'll notice for this guy here, we have a width. And the height is going to be two widths, or two times the width. And the length is going to be three times the width. And they give us this great little set of expressions here. But I just want to explain what these are. Now, the typical volume of, of a rectangular prism is your length times width times your height. So what they did was they replaced all the W's with the relationship between the three different dimensions. So here's my, my width. It's going to stay my width. My height, which they told me is two times the width. They told me that, right? Twice the width right there. So instead of using H, I'm going to use 2W. Two 2W two w means 2 times W, or whatever the width is, I'm going to multiply that by 2. And the length, well, the length is triple the size of the width. So instead of using width, I'm going to use 3w. So no matter what that w is, it's going to be three times that amount. Now, what the line they didn't put in, the line I'm going to put in here, is expanding this out a little bit because I'm confused about, or it looks a little strange, how do I get from that line, that second line, to the third line? Well, they're doing it like this. That 3w is really 3 times w, <clears throat> times w, there you go, times 2w, but... 2w is really 2 times w. So there they are. Now, that jump, that one last jump to get to this line here is just a matter of reordering our, reordering our factors because of the commutative property. The commutative property states that I can change the order of, a multiple, of the factors of a multiplication problem, and it won't affect the product. It won't affect the answer. So I can take my 3 and my 2. I can put them over here, and then take my 3w's and stick them on the end. But since I have three W's, there they are, my three W's, that will look like three to the uh, W to the third power, right? W times W times W, or W to the third power. 
And here's my 3 times 2. There's my 3 times 2, which gives me 6. So I wind up with 6 times w to the third power. Now, the only thing I need to do now is find out some value for w. Once I have, have the, uh, the some value for w, I can find the volume of this thing. Well, so let's just say the, <clears throat> the value of w is 5. Now, from there, the length would then be, <clears throat> if, it, if w is 5 and the length is 3 times, that's 3 times 5. That gives me 15. So I'm going to use meters. And the width, since the width is 2 times w, I know, excuse me, the height is 2 times w, I know that 2 times 5 gives me 10. So that's 10 meters. <clears throat> so what is my length times my width times my height? Well, it's my length times my width times my height. I'm going to do this two different ways. Watch. My length, 15 meters. My, my width, 5 meters. And my uh, height, 10 meters. Okay, so I start multiplying. 15 times 5 gives me 75 times 10, which gives me 750 meters cubed, right? Now, for the other side here, if I were to just use this particular um, expression, we should wind up with the same answer. So 6w to the third power, w, all I need is that 5. 5 equals my w, so v equals 6. I'm going to put this in parentheses, 5 to the third power, like that, okay? V is going to equal 6 times. Now, 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 gives me 25. 25 times 5 gives me 125, like that. And once I multiply those two, guess what? Yep, 700 meters cubed. Excuse me, 750 meters cubed. All right? Well, that's the deal, folks. All right, thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.